If you read the club's report on the Tokar Awards each year, you'll probably recognize this car. The Volvo V60 T6 Recharge was named the overall winner at this year's Tokar Awards. It's the second time Volvo has taken the top prize at the Tokar Awards, but it's the very first time the overall winner has been a plug-in hybrid. Over the course of this review, we're going to remind ourselves just why the Tokar Awards judges rate the Volvo so highly. We'll also consider what it's like to drive every day over all kinds of roads, and we'll learn a bit more about the plug-in hybrid powertrain. This is a Volvo estate after all, so we'll look carefully inside the cabin and the boot to consider how practical the car is. We'll also think about value for money and running costs. We already know from the tow car wards testing that the Volvo V60 is a great tow car. Over the course of this review, we'll get to know it a bit better. When you've watched the video, please do remember to click like and to subscribe to the Camping and Caravanning Club's YouTube channel. Click on the notification button to make sure you never miss a video again. For our towing test, we've matched the Volvo to a Coachman 575 VIP, borrowed from club preferred dealer Broad Lane Leisure. With a mass in running order of 1,502 kilograms, it's a 73% match for the big Volvo, which weighs just over two tons. So, first impressions then. Well, perhaps the first thing that strikes me about towing with the Volvo is just how quiet it is. We've started off with an 80% charge battery and the electric motor is really doing quite a lot of the work. In fact, I can press the pure button here to select the all electric mode and then the car will run just using the electric motor, even towing a big heavy caravan like the Coachman. Now, for efficiency on a long run, you're gonna to want to stay in the hybrid setting and a little bit later on, we'll find out just how economical the car is. The other thing you notice early on when towing with the Volvo is just how quick it is. This is a very powerful car and in fact during some midlife updates Volvo tweaked the engine and the motor to give more power, a combined output of 350 horsepower. Now peak power is all well and good but what really matters when you're towing is torque and the Volvo has loads of the stuff. You get the engine and the motor on song together and it really does fly. There's another benefit to having the engine and the motor working together and that's four-wheel drive because you see the engine powers the front wheels and the electric motor the rears. That's obviously a big plus if you're towing in wet weather or if you need to perform a hill start. With such a strong engine and motor towing at 60 miles an hour on the motorway seems effortless. It's very stable at speed too. Being so heavy and keeping all that weight really low to the ground must help. It all goes to make for very relaxing long journeys. Towing isn't the only thing the Volvo is good at. It's a fine car to drive every day too. Leave the caravan behind and the Volvo has pace to burn. It's very quick and it handles neatly, although if you're a really keen driver, maybe you're gonna prefer the BMW 330e Touring. It's just that bit more sporty. The Volvo is more about quiet and comfort than it is uh, B-road fun. The all-electric range is absolutely class-leading at a claimed 54 miles, so you're going to be able to complete many day-to-day -day drives using electricity alone. Thanks to the comfy ride and roomy cabin, it's a car passengers will enjoy as well as the driver. In the front of the car there's lots of head and leg room, so drivers of all shapes and sizes are going to be able to get comfortable. You have this memory function here, so once you've found your perfect driving position, just because someone else in your household jumps in the car, it doesn't mean you lose your favorite setup. It's nice and convenient if there's more than one person in your house who's gonna be driving the car. Now, what I really like about the interior is the design. It's very clean, it's very minimal, very Scandinavian. But what that does mean is that you have relatively few buttons. Most of the functions you're gonna to want to use are in this touch screen here. Now, it's a relatively new Google-based system and it is definitely better than the infotainment setup that it replaced, but it does have one or two foibles. For example, although it's compatible with Apple CarPlay, it's not compatible with Android Auto. Now, Volvo says that's not a problem because you simply 
download the apps you want directly to the car. But that does mean, for example, if you want to use Spotify to play your favorite music, you press the button and you have to log in. Now, I know you're only gonna do that once, but with an Android Auto setup, it's just there automatically. There's no faff, it's nice and easy. Something that is good about this infotainment system though is that the climate control settings, your temperature is always accessible. It's always there. You don't have to go into a menu to find it. Now you are gonna have to press fairly precisely and you will have to take your eyes off the road briefly to adjust the temperature or change the fan speed setting. But it's definitely better than having those settings buried somewhere deep within a menu. Overall, I really like the front of the car. It's comfortable, it's a very attractive place to be. And although there are one or two foibles with the tech, that is an impressive infotainment system. It really does look very crisp and clear. Let's see if the back of the car lives up to the front. Well, there's plenty of room back here, even if you're traveling with adults. And there are some good features to make a note of, such as the air vents either side, which will keep everyone at a comfortable temperature on a hot day. There are door bins that are shaped to take a bottle either side, and you've got these map pockets in the back of the front seats. It is going to be more comfortable for two rather than three though. This very big hump in the floor is gonna get in the way of everyone's feet if you're gonna travel three abreast. Now, if you're gonna be carrying kids rather than grown-ups, then you'll want to make use of these Isofix mounting points. You've got room for an Isofix child seat on either side in the back here. Anyone who's gonna be traveling with young children is unlikely to travel light, so let's take a look in the boot. So one of the problems of many plug-in hybrid vehicles is you lose out on boot space. All those electrical gubbins have to go somewhere and quite often vehicle engineers put them under the boot of the floor, which jacks the boot floor up and robs you of some space. But Volvo has been very clever in the way they package the car. Yes, you lose out on underfloor storage and you can't have a spare wheel, but you still get a very big square usable boot and you get some neat features like this fold up partition and you have lashing hooks to help you secure a load that you don't want moving around. However, although the rear seats split and fold 60-40, it's a bit of a surprise that you don't have remote releases by the tailgate to lower them down. It would also be even better if the Volvo seat split three ways, which is what you get in a BMW 3 Series Touring. That allows you to carry a long load, like maybe a snowboard or, or a pair of skis, and still have two passengers in the outer rear seats. It just adds to the flexibility of the car, and it's something that would improve the Volvo further. So if you want to lower the tow ball into place, then you need to push a button here just inside the tailgate. So once the tow ball drops down, you just lock it into place the last little way by hand. The electrics are on the side of the tow bar here. They're relatively close to the bumper, but in practice, it's not a problem. It's easy enough to slot the plug home. Let's come back to a question we posed earlier on. Just how economical is the plug-in Volvo while towing? Well, with the battery showing a strong charge, we achieved 165.4 MPG. Even with the battery showing no electric range, the car still returned 24.2 MPG. That's the kind of figure you could expect on a long journey, with the battery largely depleted after around 25 miles or so. It's a remarkably good car, the Volvo V60, and the plug-in hybrid version really shows it at its best. It's super stable as a tow car with a serious turn of pace, and it's economical too. In everyday driving, you can tackle many journeys on electricity alone, but you have the convenience and easy refueling of a petrol on long journeys. Having spent more time with the Volvo, it's easy to see why it beat all comers in the Tow Car Awards. Don't forget to subscribe for more tow car, caravan, camping and motorhome reviews and news and click the notifications button to be sure you never miss a new video.